After four lenses and one adapter, Greatjoy decided to rebrand. They now go by Blazar or Blazar. I gotta say, Greatjoy was growing on me. I also liked the previous logo much more than this cheesy Blade Runner meets Planet Laser. Anyway, that's not the reason we're here today. The first child of the rebranding is Nero, a super compact 1.5 times anamorphic adapter. And just like the name change, I gotta say I'm not super inspired going into this review. Which is why I'm bringing in Srini Madhavan and Matt Leaf to help me out assessing the qualities of this adapter. So we're gonna go into the test footage, then the spec breakdown, charts, pricing, and availability, finishing off with the conclusions from the test film and all the other info. Jesus, coming! Hello? Besides the fact that this is an adapter, it's got the bad lens adapter energy from the early 2000s, cheap mini DV adapters. I mean, it's the same color, it's got the same textile, a few things indicate a more positive direction, such as the non-rotating front, the focus gears, the foot for support, and the easy to use alignment mechanism with a button near the back. So maybe that bad energy is just a front. Narrow features 52 millimeter rear threads and 62 millimeter front threads, making it an ideal partner for small taking lenses. It uses a variable diopter for focusing, meaning you must set your taking lens to infinity before this little guy makes your footage smoke and hot. The adapter itself weighs just under 400 grams, which is pretty light for what it promises. Still, I'm very happy about the presence of the foot support, as I am definitely putting this on rails. Working with it just screwed onto the taking lens creates the potential for us to gradually unscrew it while focusing, wrecking our alignment little by little. Focus throw is 180 degrees with markings in both metric and imperial. The imperial marks are also done in feet and inches, which is great. Minimum focus sits at 0.6 meters or just under two feet. And that is measured from the front of the adapter. It's interesting to see such a small adapter with a decent squeeze factor. So I'm curious to how it performs. Blazar recommends a maximum aperture of f2.8 for the narrow, but we're gonna push the limits a bit here. Performance is noticeably better on the wider end on the 40 millimeters with sharp center wide open and blurry edges. This improves as we stop down and as we go to longer taking lenses, we're also pushing faster than the recommended f2.8, which gives us a fair amount of blooming, but also improvement on the edges overall. Things don't actually get good until stop to f4 on the Helios though. Then we hit the longest recommended focal length at 85 millimeters, which gives us very debatable results until we stop down to f4 or 5.6. For coverage, Blazar, what should I go with? Blazer or Blazar? I think I'm gonna go with Blazar. Okay. I'm gonna go with Blazar. For coverage, Blazar, this doesn't sound right. <laughs> Blazer. <laughs> For coverage, when we go to minimum focus though, going as wide as we can on 40 mil full frame, we end up introducing some very pronounced vignetting on the corners. But that is also a result of a pancake design. I say this because we won't clear a 37 millimeters mirror one, which is not pancake and has more recessed front optics. On the long end, the variable diopter is optimized probably for around 50 millimeters. 
and you'll get acceptable results all the way to 85 mil, but pushing longer than that will give you progressively blurrier pictures. The distortion and over compression on the edges is quite pronounced, uh, even compared to most vintage adapters. I don't know if this would be counted as character or as an issue. The distortion gets minimized as you push towards longer focal lengths, being pretty non-existent at 85 millimeters. Talking about flares, you can see this nice rainbow flare that's popping up on the very edge there. And when we look at the flares that we get on this adapter, they're much more interesting than the stuff that we're used to getting from Great Joy. It's, we got the blue streaks, but they're not nuclear about it. And unless your light is spiking the lens directly, uh, if it's not too strong, it'll not create the streaks just as easily. The Nero is coming out directly on retail today, May 3rd, for the discount price of $899 while the regular retail price is gonna be $1,000. I'm kind of happy it's not a crowdfunding campaign though. Another thought is that the placement of the foot and lens support clashed with where we needed to place the focus motor. So we had to bring that over the top of the adapter. This is an issue that's from the design itself and not from our particular situation. For the test film, we were always at F2 on the Leica R's, 35 and 50 millimeters, which is faster than recommended. An S35 on the Ursa, uh, I really couldn't complain about anything, honestly. Like, there are some CA in the bokeh, but we also get that with like Kawas and other scopes that we love to use. And um, honestly, the usability of this thing is, is crazy. To look at this thing and just to think, it's a tiny little lens. The fact that it's able to resolve all of that image and get such a clean bokeh, uh, the most fun that we probably had, though, was the very end of the day when we put a wide-angle adapter on it and we saw all of the magic that could happen when we're combining many lenses into one. And it's very true. The flares, chef's kiss. Second to none. <laughs> the wide-angle adapter being edited hard on 28mm, so we had to step up to 35mm as our taking lens, and even then, the resulting image was about 10% wider than the 28mm itself. I feel the Nero is super cool for its price and proposition. The look is very characteristic and you see like the lot of distortion and softness and blurriness that happens towards the edges of the frame. And that kind of stands out to me as an adapter quirk because it will go away as you go to longer focal lengths. I found that the look is much more controlled than Super 35, in a good way. I believe this adapter will appeal to folks who want portable and cheap options while still maintaining their spherical lens collection and just adding the, the characteristics of anamorphic on top of it. Unfortunately, that's not me. What are your thoughts on the rebrand and about this adapter itself? I'd love to get your input in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Chito Fahadens. In the beginning of the day, I wanted to walk up and toss it in the garbage, but now I would buy one. <laughs>